On April 13th, the Chinese ferry Zhonghua Fuxing was seemingly following its usual Dalian Yantai route, as indicated by its automatic identification system, tracking its location in the Bohai Sea in the north of China. However, the ship was actually spotted a few hours later, 700 kilometers south, closer to Taiwan, with its destination being Fujian province. Its cargo, PLA Marines. Its purpose? Participate in a PLA amphibious assault exercise involving the launching and recovering of amphibious vehicles at sea from its ramps. Now, two major questions come to mind. Why was a commercial ferry so far from its originally reported route? And why was a civilian ship carrying out a military exercise instead of a Chinese Navy warship? Well, the answer lies in the fact that these ferries are nothing short of China's secret weapons in case of an invasion of Taiwan. In fact, using these ferries in the event of an invasion of the island provides two main benefits. A significant increase in the People's Liberation Army's sea lift capability and added tactical ambiguity fostered by the blurring of what is a civilian ship and what is a war ship. But Let's take a step back, and let's see what these ships are capable of in detail. Since 2012, all major shipping companies in China have been integrated into the Strategic Projection Support Ship Fleets. These fleets are divided into three main theater commands. The Northern, Eastern, and Southern, which are all responsible for the main maritime theaters surrounding China, including the South China Sea, the East China Sea, and the Yellow and Bohai Seas. These ships are part of China's maritime militia fleet, similar to fishing vessels involved in the South China Sea disputed island standoffs. While fishing vessels excel in gray area operations, ferries have great sea lift capabilities. The most capable ferries in terms of transportation efficiency within the strategic support fleet are on the Roll-On Roll-Off Ferries, or RORO for short. First developed during the Dunkirk evacuation in World War II, these ships are equipped with multiple access ramps, usually with one at the stern and one at the aft of the ship, allowing wheeled vehicles to quickly be embarked and disembarked. Roro ferries are used by militaries around the world to redeploy their units. This is because these ships are designed as ideal vehicles for transporting supply trucks, tanks, and armor vehicles. China's largest Roro ferry can hold up to 300 heavy-duty trailers, which can be disembarked in a matter of hours. This translates into an unloading capacity of up to 2,000 tons per hour. According to a study by the PLA Logistics Academy Research Center, a single combined brigade consumes around 600,000 kilograms, or 1 million pounds, of fuel per day. In optimal conditions, one of these ships can supply the equivalent of three days' worth of fuel in just one hour. When compared to purpose-built amphibious warships, such as the U.S. Navy's San Antonio class, Roro ferries can carry a larger number of vehicles. The San Antonio class, which costs 1.5 billion U.S. dollars each, has approximately 25,000 square feet of vehicle space, or 2,450 square meters. In contrast, the Bohai Hengda, China's largest Roro ferry, at 29 million each, can transport almost four times the number of vehicles. While commercial Roro vessels may not stand a chance in a combat scenario, amphibious warships like the San Antonio are equipped with defensive capabilities that make them more suited for contested sea space operations. However, in the case of an invasion of Taiwan, where it only takes a few hours to traverse the strait, and the ships can be continuously escorted from land by PLA aircrafts, a commercial vessel can be used to increase the military sea lift capability and bring supplies up from behind lines. These ships also need proper berthing to load and unload their cargo at best efficiency. Taiwan's main ports would therefore become primary objectives for these, especially those closer to Taiwan's high-priority targets. Taipei, with the government buildings, and Kaohsiung, being the island's main logistical hub. 
Pretty much as Chinese planners recognize the value of having proper port facilities, so do Taiwanese and American strategists, which could sabotage and destroy these infrastructure to avoid their usage. For these reasons, since 2017, Roro ferries have been built to military standards, making them better suited for less than ideal unloading situations. Before diving deep into that, let's hear a quick word from today's sponsor, World of Warships. If you are a fan of geopolitics and ships, and if you're watching this video, you probably are, then you're in for a treat. World of Warships is a free-to-play game that's available on both PC and consoles, and provides some of the best graphics you can find. I mean, look at that water! With over 40 unique maps, dynamic weather, and visually stunning effects, this game is a feast for the eyes. And let's not forget about the ships themselves. The 3D models are incredibly detailed and high fidelity. With more than 500 different vessels to choose from, including cruisers, destroyers, and even aircraft carriers, the possibilities are endless, including using unique skins, like this month's Popeye special. Download World of Warships using the link in the description and use the code POPEYE during registration to get 500 doubloons, 1,500,000 credits, 10 days of premium account, and a choice of the ships Langley, Phoenix, Wyoming, or Clemson after 15 battles. A big thank you to World of Warships for sponsoring this video and giving us the chance to experience the thrill of commanding our own ships. Now back to the video. In 2016, National Defense Transportation Law integrated even more domestic shipping companies' commercial fleets into the strategic support fleets obligating them to support the People's Liberation Army, the PLA, operations. To meet the requirement of military operations, certain civilian ships must be built to military standards. These ships must be able to transport mechanized units, load and unload in unprepared or minimal berthing conditions, and maintain high cruising speeds. Roro vessels directly linked to PLA activities are designed with even more specific military standards. A Taiwanese military study found out that the major characteristic of these vessels are the multiple horizontal levels, usually ranging from 2 to 6. This allows to maximize the usable space, but also to minimize damage in case of damage done to one of the floors. This also makes them more recognizable as they usually sport larger hulls and sit taller on the water than purely commercial ships. Furthermore, these ships are equipped with additional ventilators and anti-rocking tanks, which better helps in ventilating the inside of the ship from the exhaust gases and stabilizing the ship when loaded with heavy vehicles, like tanks. However, the most tangible example of how these ships have been modified to military standards can be seen in their access ramps. A typical ferry ramp consists of hydraulic pistons that drive chains tethered to the ramp frame, pretty much like a medieval castle drawbridge. The ramp is lowered onto a berth to unload the ship's cargo. However, new ramps are designed to support the launch and recovery of amphibious vehicles. First, the ramp itself needs to be reinforced to hold the weight of armor vehicles at its tip but it also needs to be able to maintain its position against the waves and the currents. A case in point of new ramp design is presented by the Bang Chi Dao. In 2014 pictures, the ship featured the commonly found chain piston setup. But during an amphibious exercise in 2020, the ship was spotted with a new ramp system with pairs of hydraulic cylinders on each side of the ramp connected to support arms instead of the chains. This makes the ramp capable of launching and recovering amphibious vessels at sea, but also makes it capable of operating with relatively unprepared berthing facilities or floatable pontoons. Although roll-on, roll-off vessels are commonly used for sea lift purposes by militaries around the world, the Chinese have taken their potential to the next level by utilizing these ships in amphibious operations. This capability is not to be underestimated. When these ships are in action, they are launching and recovering amphibious armored vehicles. And it's not just one ship that's capable of this feat, either. A Taiwan military publication estimated that there are around 40 vessels with this capability. While it may seem unlikely to see these ships in actual combat situations, the ability to insert and extract units at sea is a real advantage. 
These ships could be particularly useful in supplying PLA troops from behind the front line, freeing up ad hoc amphibious vessels for more contested operations. Even if Taiwan's ports were rendered completely or partially unusable for commercial ships, modified Roro ferries could still operate in less than ideal conditions, such as on unprepared berthing, floatable pontoons, or even at sea, ensuring that the supply lines remain active. While these ships may not be suitable for long-range force projection operations, in the specific context of an invasion of Taiwan, they increased the plan's overall sea lift capability by almost fourfold adding an important ace in the sleeve to China's military. Furthermore, the blurring of the line between warships and commercial vessels adds a layer of tactical ambiguity to the use of these ships in wartime operations. In the event of a Chinese invasion of Taiwan, a defending force adhering to international law would face the difficult decision of potentially sinking civilian-looking vessels, risking the lives of innocent civilians on board. According to the Law of Armed Conflict, there is a clear distinction between warships and civilian ships, with the latter not being lawful military targets unless involved in belligerent actions. However, from a Chinese planner's perspective, this ambiguity can be advantageous. By blurring the line between what constitutes a warship and what does not, the fog of war is increased, potentially delaying a response during an invasion where every second counts. On the other hand, the use of commercial Roro ships can actually benefit Taiwan. Taipei military planners are aware of these ships and monitor their movements closely, tracking their location especially when they deviate from their usual route, and this can provide early warning of a possible invasion. All in all, Chinese commercial Roro ships can be a significant asset in a potential invasion of Taiwan, and tracking their movements can provide valuable information. I really hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you can check out other videos on our Patreon page. If not, see you at the next one. Ciao.